We acknowledge the First Nations people as the traditional custodians of the land we are on today. We acknowledge and pay respect to all elders past, present and emerging. The Now in the Future podcast is an exciting way of sharing members' stories of opportunities, challenges and provide support and expert advice for Down Syndrome community. Down Syndrome Queensland's vision is to support, advocate for empower people with Down Syndrome to take their rightful places as valuable and contributing members of their community both now into the future. Many parents worry about how having a child with Down Syndrome may impact their family. Of course, every family is different, but personal stories and research show that most families that have a child with Down Syndrome are stable, successful and happy, and that siblings often have greater compassion and empathy. In today's episode of the Now in the Future podcast, we'll be shining a light on the experience of siblings discussing the bond between and unique perspectives regarding having a sibling with Down syndrome. We will discuss what this role has brought to the lives of the two siblings interviewed, Becky and Laurel. So my name's Becky, I'm I'm 32 years old and I work here at Down Syndrome Queensland um, on our employment project. My name's Laurel, I'm 17, I'm finishing high school this year and I will be studying at the University of Queensland next year. Exciting times. It's really great to have two siblings across two age ranges so that you can really share your journey of what it's been like to be the sister of a young man with Down syndrome. So that we might find out a little bit more about that to begin with, um, we might start with you, Becky. Can you tell us a little bit about your brother? Absolutely. So Mikey is um, two years younger than me, so he's 30 years old. Um, He is um, currently working at University of Queensland um, on a, he's a research assistant there as part of the um, Down Syndrome project that they're working on that they've got funding for at the moment. Um, He's very into fitness um, and at the moment we are in the process of helping him um, get the skills to move out of home. Yeah, so that's the next big step for him is moving out semi-independently. Great. We'll talk a bit more about that shortly. Um, But I guess, Laurel, can you tell us a little bit about your brother? So my brother's name is Xavier. He's 14 at the moment. He goes to Darling Point Special School. He's in the stage where he's not really thinking about employment or his schooling in particular. He's just enjoying life, loving every day, having fun, really. Wonderful. As a peak body for people with Down syndrome living in Queensland, we're here to support the whole family. And so something that we're really aware of is that sibling roles are are ones that perhaps don't get as much attention. Um, We often have families or others who are providing daily care to a person with Down syndrome reach out and and we also love working with um, adults with Down syndrome themselves. But sometimes that sibling relationship is not necessarily one that we hear a lot about. And so when we do hear from siblings, sometimes it can be when parents are getting older themselves and suddenly the person with Down syndrome might need some other decision-making support in their life. And so this might be a time when a sibling potentially gets involved or reaches out. But also another time when we are often asked about siblings is when a family finds out that they're expecting a baby with Down syndrome. And so one of the first questions they might pose to us is, what is this going to mean for my other children? And particularly if baby with Down syndrome is not the first child in the family. So I guess later on we will come back and ask you both what your thoughts would be for prospective parents. But to start with, we wanted to talk a little bit about really what it's meant for you and a little bit about possibly what that's involved over different parts of your life. I do have very early on memories of when Mikey was born, um, of of mum and dad telling us that he had Down syndrome. I was two, so I didn't understand what Down syndrome was. Mike was born um, a long time before there was any kind of prenatal testing. So we found out the day he was born, it was a surprise to everybody. Um, And they, they told us throughout all our lives, Mike's got four siblings and we all knew that he had Down syndrome. I didn't understand what Down syndrome was until probably after high school. I'm embarrassed to admit that. When Mikey was in primary school, he used to take 
thyroid tablets. And I don't know if that was related to having Down syndrome or separate, but I thought Down syndrome was a thyroid problem. And that's what I used to tell people. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, so you've got to have a disability. I'm like, oh, yeah, he just has a thyroid problem. <laughs> so I didn't quite have a grasp of what Down syndrome was until I was probably out of high school when I really researched it for myself and really understood what yeah. Down syndrome meant. I don't have any clear memory of being told that Xavier had Down syndrome. I know that my parents always tell me the day they found out, it was a couple of months before he was born, my mum was sitting at the dining table crying and apparently I tried to offer her my dummy to make her feel better. Oh but I feel like I've just known all my life. I don't know how, like obviously they must have told me sometime, but yeah. I've just grown up always understanding what it is and being able to explain it to people. Mm. And perhaps that's what you reflected upon, Becky, that when Mikey was born, there wasn't much known until the time of birth, whereas for your family, Laurel, it sounds like you had that preparation. It was a very early on thing and everyone already knew the facts and we all knew exactly what Mm. the issue was, I guess. I mean, it was obviously a shock to my parents when the doctors told them. And I think one of the first things mum said was like, is he going to survive? Because we mm-hmm. just didn't know at mm-hmm. that time. There wasn't enough kind of, mm-hmm. you know, knowledge about it um, for, for her yeah. to know. So there was panic and, you know, was he going to walk? Is he going to talk? All those kind of questions kind of came up when yes. he was born. Yeah. yeah. So that's two very different experiences already. Um, Becky, you mentioned before about a friend saying or potentially other people asking you about your brother. And I wondered whether that's been something that's happened over the years, um, that people have come to you as the sibling and asked questions. Particularly when I was younger, a lot of people would ask if he was autistic. I think my age group, you know, I went to school 15 years ago in high school and I think there was just less general knowledge about things like this. It wasn't as kind of publicly talked about. I think there was a lot more of a stigma around it Mm -hmm. at that time Mm -hmm. so there wasn't it was more just kind of really basic level one questions like is he autistic you know what's his disability you know why does he do these things blah 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 so Mm -hmm. that was more the questions that I got when I was younger yeah I think it would be different growing up now and being in in a mainstream school and Mm -hmm. yeah I think I didn't find that I had people come to me and ask like what his disability was I think there was enough information that people knew for themselves Mm -hmm. I did have a few like closer friends ask whether it was hard for me and ask more personal questions Mm -hmm. but in general I didn't have a lot of people ask me questions I think as you say there's now more awareness these days and you've grown up in the age of the internet Laurel whereas that was only just really coming in for you at the time Becky something I think um and a huge credit to my parents for this they normalized down syndrome for my siblings at the day he was born you know we always we never grew up thinking that Mike was really different from the rest Mm. of us he was always treated the same way he got punished the same way do you know what I mean and so we just integrated him into our lives in the same way that we did all the siblings so I think that was a huge credit to them to do that yeah you've both mentioned school and so did you have the experience of going to school together with your brothers yeah so Xavier started at my primary school maybe two years after I started Mm. he was always different I guess but I think the kids loved that about him and all the kids just loved him like they followed him around they thought he was the cutest thing I actually really enjoyed having my brother go to the same school as me because he'd always come up and like hug me if he saw me Mm. and I know a lot of teachers were able to look after him and tell me if there was something they didn't understand Mm. it was good a good thing having me in the same school because they could ask me like what does he want what does he need and I thought that was a really positive aspect of going to the same school as a sibling. What was that like for you? Because I don't imagine many other siblings get asked to interpret or support in that way. I've always been extremely protective over him. So I think that whenever teachers came up to me and asked for help, I was always more than happy to like go and see him and help him out. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it honestly made our connection stronger because a lot of siblings who have siblings at the same school don't necessarily want to see their sibling during the day. Mm -hmm. They'll avoid their brother or sister. But Mm -hmm. I found that whenever I had the chance to see Xavier, I always would. So that might have helped strengthen our bond. Um, Yeah, so Mikey went to the same primary school um, Mm -hmm. as me. Um, Both my mum and dad were very heavily involved in that primary school, I think because of of Mike going there. So dad Mm -hmm. was in the PNC, mum did teach music there. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were very fortunate that there was a good... um, 
special ed unit there. And there was a really good special ed teacher there, so that was good. We had a really good group of friends in school. Um, and, yeah, I did have a similar experience that, you know, there would be interactions between Mikey and myself during the day, which was fine. I really loved being able to kind of make sure that he wasn't getting himself up to mischief and things like that. And teachers would ask mm-hmm. questions, you know, how do we deal with this, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But uh, I think more of that would, would have been asked to my parents just because they were so heavily involved in, in things that happened and stuff like that. But um, mm-hmm. it was really nice. Mikey did go to our the high, same high school as me until grade nine. Mm-hmm. Um, two problems we had in high school um, – that's when bullying really started with Mikey. I think primary school, there wasn't so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but high school, it definitely became a big thing, um, which was really unfortunate. And what about for you, Laurel? You mentioned going to primary school with Xavier. Was was that different in high school? Yeah, Xavier did two days at primary school and two days at Darling Point Special School. So he was alternating mainstream schooling and special schooling up until about grade three. And that's when I think my parents made the decision that the mainstream school system just wasn't for him. There wasn't enough support at my school and they made a decision that he would have better opportunities just going to a special school that could cater for his needs. Mm -hmm. So we were only in the same school for three years. But during that time, like, I actually really enjoyed having him go to my school. And what about socially? We've talked about school and what that's been like to be together as siblings, but when you're out and about as a family now, um, and Becky, I'm not sure if you're still living with Mikey anymore. No, I don't live with Mikey, um, but I'm very fortunate to work for another organisation where we um, do social outings for people with disabilities. Um, And Mikey um, is a big part of that organisation, which is awesome. So we do get to hang out on weekends. Mikey loves a drink. Um, He loves to dance. He loves to, Mikey um, loves to think that he's James Bond. So he loves to order a shaken martini or whatever it is that James Bond has. So, no, yeah. <laughs> so Mikey loves to be social. He's always been very um, extroverted, centre of attention, loves to talk to people. So that's um, the social experience that I've had with Mike. It's very normal for me. Um, I think he integrates well. He can chat with anybody. So I think socially a big issue has been when I'm out with him, I feel a responsibility to look after him and to make sure that He's staying safe and he's being polite to people and he's not just hurting little kids that he sees walking past. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that socially we're not at the stage where we can hang out together and have fun because it's still I'm taking on the role of a caregiver, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, that's something that I've really try to not be a caregiver figure in Mike's life. I want to be a confident dream. I want to be a big sister. I don't mm-hmm. want to be a person that he sees me as some kind of authority figure mm-hmm. because I worry if that happens that he will stop confiding in me about things and that information, if there's something wrong, it won't be filtered through to us. Mm-hmm. So I do very much try to keep it a fun sibling relationship mm-hmm. like I would with my other siblings. Mm-hmm. I do have my, like, supporter hat yeah. on there when I'm yeah. with him, but I'm very much kind of, like, keep that in the back seat while I'm with him and try to just kind of, if issues do come up, I won't deal with them then and there yeah. necessarily if they don't need to be dealt with then and there, yeah. 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 I feel like Xavier's at the age where he still needs the support and mm-hmm. I don't think he understands the whole caregiver versus sister yeah so I definitely think that is something that I should consider as he gets older I don't always want to be seen as the figure who has to look after him yeah Yeah. you want to be his big sis and you know and I know that Mikey sees that relationship that we have you know the other siblings have there's a lot of us there's five of us so um I want him to feel a part of that and I want him to feel like he can confide in us and trust us and have that relationship we're not just there to like rouse on him and tell him what to do you know we're just there to be his buds so, yeah yeah it is a lot isn't it and I think all siblings regardless of whether they have a disability find it to be a bit of a balancing act mm. we want to talk about all aspects of being a sibling today but you've naturally both segued into what have been some of the sticking points or some of the other challenges that perhaps siblings in general don't experience Um, I'm wondering, is there anything that you have noticed that is quite different to your other friendship groups? In the last few years in particular, Mikey has become very infatuated with wanting to have a girlfriend, Mm. which is great and very normal for for developmentally his age. Mm. Um, Of course it is. Um, It's just finding the right person. Um, He's been very involved with dating apps, um, but going down rabbit holes with, you know, 
scammers Mm -hmm. and having those conversations with him he's thinking like this hot girl and she's falling in love with me and she wants to meet me and then we Mm -hmm. find out that you know her address is in Sydney somewhere and like just trying to have those conversations with him he will often push back and say you guys just want to control me you guys just don't want me to be happy like no one Mm -hmm. understands me he goes through that and I felt like sometimes when I've like said to my friends, like, oh, we're dealing with this with Mike at the moment, that's not something they've kind of had to experience before. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I would have friends who have been that heavily kind of monitoring their siblings' dating life and things like that. But we do have to, unfortunately, with Mikey, and not because we want to control him, but because we want him to be safe and we don't want him to be being taken advantage of and things like that, which unfortunately happens with vulnerable people. So that's definitely been a challenge for us um, in the recent years. Yeah. I think it's interesting. And Laurel, I know you don't have any other siblings, but um, compared to your other siblings, Becky, you're probably not that invested in what's going on for them. Exactly. (laughs) And Something that Mike does is compare himself to our other siblings. And so Mike's smack bang in the middle. He's got two older siblings and two younger siblings. And when he sees his younger siblings doing things, he thinks, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Because that's, you know, it's hierarchy, you know, when you grow up. Like, you know, when you get to 13, you get a mobile phone. And then, you know, when you're 16, you get a car. And so when Mikey sees his younger brother, especially, you know, going out and having relationships and doing all these things, He's like, well, why can't I do that? You know, Andy's dating a girl from work, so therefore it's appropriate for me to date a girl from work. But it's just, he, it's, and it would be impossible to understand that, you know. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's sad, but it's, and it's challenging. It's a big challenge. Yeah. I don't know if both of you have seen it, but Core Down for International World Down Syndrome Day released a video clip on relationships. Yeah. 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 I feel like the biggest challenge for me has been that especially in the younger grades, I really needed my friends to be there for me when we were going through tough times at home. Mm -hmm. But I felt like they just didn't understand Mm -hmm. and they tried to compare their relationships with their siblings to my relationship with Xavier. And it just made me feel really Mm -hmm. ununderstood. Mm -hmm. That's not a good word. But you just feel like nobody understands. And Mm -hmm. we would have times when Xavier would be going through a really violent stage and, like, he'd be hitting people at home and he'd be having meltdowns in the middle of shopping centres and just screaming and lashing out. And I'd be really upset and I'd go to school and try and tell my friends, like, this is what happened at home. I'm feeling really upset about it. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, my brother's just as bad. Like, my siblings do that all the time. But they just don't understand what it's really like, I guess. Yeah. And so that was one of the biggest things that I struggled with is I guess other people just don't have the same experiences as you and so they can't be expected to understand. But when they try and compare their life to yours and it's just so different Mm -hmm. yeah it's really hard yeah I think that's something else is other people understanding the different dynamics of the relationships and things like Mm -hmm. that like I had a I had an ex-partner who used to rouse at me you know if Mike was hanging around and he was being annoying and I would just be like Mike go away you're being annoying he'd be like oh my god you can't speak to him like that like he's got down syndrome and I'm like Yes, I can. Like he's, he's still not, your brother. He's not yeah. like exempt from being annoying just because he has yeah. Down syndrome. And he's still my brother and we still have that relationship. Mm. But he was just really always like surprised that Mike could get in trouble and we could get mad at him. Like it was like we had to kind of, he had this idea that he would just, he can get away with murder because he's got, and I'm like, that's yeah. not how it works. Well, like, the other <laughs> issue would be that Xavier would do something and I'd be telling my friends, I'm really angry about this. Like he yeah. just hurt me or something. And I'd be like, oh, but you have to be, like, gentle on him. He does have Down syndrome. That doesn't excuse the behaviour. I know. And you're like, yeah, don't you know he's right and wrong? Like, yeah. no, like, as you, as his sibling, you know best, like, you know, where his mind is at and what he knows the difference between right and wrong. And he knows when he's being annoying. And yeah. I'm tell, I would tell any of my siblings to go away if they were being annoying. I think what I'm hearing from both of you is that you're both in agreement over the need for the same consequences wherever possible. But... It sounds like you were wanting to feel validated for how you were feeling at the time and that, Laurel, you more than anyone had a good understanding of where Xavier was at and that his behaviours at times might have been attributed more to communication breakdowns than anything else. Mm. Felt like I wasn't allowed to be angry because he had Down syndrome. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 I'm wondering how that is for you these days. Do you feel there's anyone in your circle that understands more? I think that my friends have become more understanding over the years and they appreciate that the challenges I face at home with my siblings are different to how they might interact with their siblings of similar ages. Mm -hmm. 
But I think that Xavier has just genuinely gotten better over the last few years. So I haven't had as many challenges yeah. in that aspect. Bearing in mind your friends may not have had the maturity at the time to know how best to respond, what do you think would have been helpful at that point? That's really difficult because I guess there's a lot of things that would need to be changed Mm -hmm. in order for like younger siblings to feel understood. But I think Mm -hmm. maybe just the main thing is that people, I would have appreciated if my friends Mm -hmm. in like grade two and three hadn't have compared their lives necessarily Mm -hmm. to mine. Mm -hmm. I think that the comparison is what makes you feel really misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think that maybe the most important conversation for parents to have with their children both with siblings, with Down syndrome and without, is not Mm. to compare your home life to someone else's Mm. because you genuinely don't know what it's like. Absolutely. And I think on that as well is being able to accept that the siblings and the family are going to know best. Like Mm. you probably don't know better about having a brother with Down syndrome than I do. Yeah. So don't... Like, don't talk to us yeah. like you might. Yeah. Yeah, and don't yeah. tell me what I'm allowed to feel. Yeah, and how I'm allowed to react and interact. Yeah, yeah I agree. Research does tell us that it's really important for siblings and all the children in the family to have their needs met and understood. And um, most families do an amazing job of that, but I guess sometimes there could be space for extended family members or perhaps friendship groups or even maybe it's school staff who are the first to pick up that life at home might have hit a bumpy patch. And so... It's really about the whole community being a little more understanding of some of the unique challenges, I think, for siblings. And that's the point behind today's episode, really. Um, Often parents have a space to talk about family life, and that might be within a support group or with their wider social or family network or even with their child's therapists. But I think sometimes we forget that siblings don't always have the same opportunities for that kind of debriefing I think it's harder for the siblings who are younger because while parents might have their support group and everything, I find that often siblings or people with Down syndrome are more mature than their peers Mm -hmm. and this Mm -hmm. creates quite a big gap between being able to talk about your home life and having your friends understand. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I think gets forgotten a lot Mm -hmm. is that these younger siblings Mm -hmm. of the person with Down syndrome need someone to talk to, but they can't find that at school. Mm -hmm. And so I guess being there for them and just Mm -hmm. letting them know that you're allowed to feel angry, you're allowed to be sad, Mm -hmm. you're allowed to feel these emotions. Mm -hmm. Just because the people at school don't understand, it doesn't mean they're not real. I think that rings true to my family situation as well. Mm -hmm. My two younger siblings are definitely mature beyond their years. And I think that some of that would be attributed to, you know, I guess you do have to be more grown up when you've got a middle child that's got Down syndrome. And so, and I think also, you know, some of the focus of parenting the rest of us um, was a little bit taken away because, you know, Mike did need that more attention. So um, I guess that, that kind of made them kind of grow up a bit maybe faster or mature faster, I think. So, yeah. This is such a good conversation to have because one of the questions I get most often asked when a family is told they're expecting a baby with Down syndrome is, what is this going to mean for my family, for my other children? So, Laurel, you talked about your mum being in a bit of shock initially and this is obviously unexpected news at the time for everybody and it obviously takes time to process that. But I'm wondering what you would say to families now with the um, ability to look back with age and maturity and know that, you know, even when there are those challenging points, those times will pass and things do improve. I'm just wondering what you might say to a new family wondering about the impact on the family. You know, obviously when you've got a child that is developed significantly developmentally behind even its younger siblings Mm. they're going to have more attention on them because Mm. they are less independent than their other siblings are and that is until today that is still the point like that is still the how it is you know he still is more dependent on my parents than the rest of us are Mm. um and I think that I just think a huge thing that my parents did like I mentioned before was just normalize Down syndrome straight away Mm. and so because he was always treated the same and because he was always just he wasn't like you know it wasn't to us like Mikey's different you know we've got to treat Mikey in a certain way it was just kind of like this is it um I think that is something that really made a big big difference in the functionality of our family growing up and I think that um it probably avoided maybe challenges that maybe some other families face if you do kind of wrap them in cotton wool and you do maybe Mm. not normalize it as much Mm. as you should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I found one thing I really appreciated my parents doing was that because obviously Xavier required extra attention, he was quite challenging, he needed extra care, extra support, and that definitely could have made me feel like my parents weren't giving me enough attention, they weren't caring for me, they weren't loving me as much, but they always made time to spend time one-on-one with me Mm. and that made me feel like, yes, Xavier does need the extra attention and support, but my parents love me just as much just because they spend more time with him. It doesn't Mm. mean that they've forgotten about me Mm. or they don't care about me. Mm. And so every weekend my parents would make time Mm. either together or generally just like one-on-one, spend a couple of hours with me, Mm. make sure, like check in, how am I doing? Is there anything you want to talk about? And that was a really Mm. important thing that I cherished during my childhood was that Xavier's not the favourite child. He gets a lot of extra attention and support, but there's a reason for that. Yeah. It's not because they prefer him over me no. and they're always, they're going to be there for me. Yeah, I agree. And I would, like, I would say none of my siblings ever felt unloved or unwanted or we didn't get enough attention as children at all. Yeah. But, I mean, having multiple children, your attention is going to be divided anyway. So, you know, yeah. it's going to be hard to balance any amount of children, whether they have a disability or not. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good point that Laurel makes is, you know, if you are worried about that and, you know, you know too much attention, just make sure you do make time for the other, mm. the other children and make sure that mm. they are loved and they know that they're loved. And I think that that is enough. Like, it seems yeah. like that was enough. Yeah, that was definitely is. enough in our situation as well Mm. yeah you've touched on this already but is there anything else besides the maturity that we discussed earlier that you feel that you've developed that has come directly from having a sibling with a disability it's the two that immediately come to mind are patience and tolerance Mm -hmm. um i've definitely learned to be more maybe open-minded and and just accepting of everybody's different everybody's on their own kind of path everyone's at their own place Mm -hmm. um and people are who they are for a reason. And you don't, you you know, if, if you haven't met them and sat down and have a conversation with them, you don't, you don't know that reason. So don't be too quick to judge. But I think it's definitely learnt me patience and tolerance as well because it can be trying yeah. at the best of times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that yeah. 100%. Another thing that I thought of was empathy. Mm. I feel like Huge having thing. a sibling with Down syndrome really makes you feel for people who may be excluded in society or yeah. mm. even just at school. I am always the one to go over and talk to anyone who's sitting by themselves. Like I really just don't want anyone to feel like they're being excluded mm. for their differences. Yeah. And I think that all comes down to Xavier. Like mm. I would never want him to be excluded. Mm. And so I would never want anyone else to feel like that either. Exactly, Mm. yeah. And, I mean, it's led me to a life where now my career is advocating for people with disabilities and Down syndrome and I wouldn't change that for the world. And, yeah, it gives me the opportunity to give them opportunities that they might not otherwise have had. So that's something. That's actually another thing that comes up in the research quite commonly, that people often go into helping professions where those skills are really harnessed because it's just become a part of who they are and what they stand for. Yeah. Yeah. Don't limit them and don't put limitations in your own mind about what they can and can't achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, And this rings really true, I think, to Mikey and his upbringing. Mikey um, used to be an international swimmer and he's competed all over the world. And there's, I mean, none of my friends have ever done that. Mm-hmm. And he's had opportunities that none of my friends, will, I will never get in my life. And so I just think, let them be big and ambitious and, you know, push their limits and see what they can do, but don't hold them back. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, yeah, don't don't have preperceptions in your own mind about what they will and won't achieve or where they'll get to in life because you don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. they can yes. do incredible things. I think my biggest thing that I would tell specifically siblings of a child with Down syndrome is that, you will get through it and you'll come out the other end and you'll be the best of friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this time two years ago, I still had times where I just felt resentment towards Xavier because he was getting so much attention and I felt like he was deliberately being difficult. But now he's so protective of me and it's so cute. Mm-hmm. And I just genuinely enjoy spending time with him, mm-hmm. which is something that I would have thought impossible even a year ago. Yeah. So just, it will get better. They will get more mature. It's not going to be like this forever. You'll come out the other end and you'll be really close friends. You will, 100%. I remember one time I was at home back when I lived with my parents and Mikey and I was upset because the boy had not texted me back or something. And I was crying (laughs) in my bedroom and then Mikey texted me to tell me to come downstairs and he'd set up on the deck, 
um, champagne and a little cheese plate. And he just Aww. like consoled me and he was like, you're going to be okay. And you know what? It was better advice than any of my friends would have given <laughs> me. Like it was just the most beautiful thing, you know. So mm. they can be that person in yeah. your life. And, you know, that's yeah. more than I can say for some of my friends and, and you know, my other siblings. So, you yeah. know, just... They can just give you a perspective. Yes, a perspective that you just don't think of. I think yeah. they just, they're so wholesome and genuine and they just see the world in a different way to we, what we do. And I think that we could learn a lot mm-hmm. from that. And I think that's something to remember is that they can teach us just as much as we can teach yeah. them. Like, don't think because they've got a disability that they're but we're not learning from them because yeah. we are. I think just, yeah, it's a journey, but it's a really beautiful journey. And, you know, every journey has challenges. Mm. Um, and this one has, but it's also got some really good highs and it's it's a nice place to be and I wouldn't change any of it. Yeah. If even if I could wouldn't yeah. yeah. And I know my parents feel the same way. And I'm, I'm so grateful for everything that he's so taught grateful. me and yeah. all the like I guess values and skills that I've developed and mm. yeah, I'm so grateful for the journey and yeah, yeah wouldn't change it either. Yeah. And yeah. I'm excited for what's ahead for Mikey. So yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a journey that keeps on going. I can't wait to see what we're like this year, time in two years. Yes. Like, yeah. It just keeps yeah. getting better. Yeah. yeah. It does. It yeah. just keeps uh, getting better. If you're looking for more information around the sibling experience following this episode, you can find more in the April 2021 issue of Down Syndrome Australia's Voice magazine. You can also find other helpful resources on the Siblings Australia website, which is www.siblingsaustralia.org.au. And there are also books that are available to be loaned through the DSQ library. In addition, on the Our Stories section of the Down Syndrome Australia website, you can read about other families' experiences when supporting their children to understand more about their brother or sister's diagnosis. Please also feel free to reach out to the support services team at DSQ, who can assist with the recommendations of a range of books to help siblings of various ages understand more about Down syndrome. In addition, the team are happy to discuss any questions that you may have about family dynamics, and we're here to listen to and support siblings of all ages to adjust and understand. the Now and the Future podcast, we would love to hear your thoughts and questions as a way of continuing to provide essential information to the community. If you have a question, would like any more information on any of our episodes, or have suggestions for future episodes, simply send us an email at engagement at downsyndromeqld.org.au. That's engagement at downsyndromeqld.org.au and we will do our best to provide you with the information required in one of our upcoming episodes. The Now and the Future podcast aims to support, advocate for and empower people with Down syndrome both now and into the future. You have been listening to the Now and the Future podcast. For more information about this episode and many other topics relate to Down syndrome. Please visit the Down syndrome Queensland website at downsyndrome.org.ie slash QRD. Down syndrome Queensland supporting people with Down syndrome now and into the future.